In Chapter 12, we talked about responsibility accounting. We said that for internal performance evaluation, firms think of their various departments or divisions as either revenue centers, cost centers, profit centers, or investment centers. Revenue centers and cost centers are primarily evaluated based on variances that we discussed in Chapter 16. This chapter has to do with ways to evaluate profit centers and investment centers. If we are evaluating a profit center, we need to assess whether the division has met profit goals. Externally, investors use this information to determine whether this is a firm that they would like to invest in. Internally, the firm uses divisional profits to decide which managers are doing a good job. We can determine our divisions by where they're located, the Eastern Division versus the Western Division, or by product line. This decision is not a gap issue. This is for internal assessment. We need to consider which costs are under the control of the manager. So that means that there may be some costs that would be considered under GAAP but might not be considered for performance evaluation if the manager has no control over those costs. That's an internal decision and it's going to be unique to each firm. Divisional income is very helpful to managers because it's easy to understand. It shows whether the manager is making smart decisions. It reveals the success of the division in terms of generating revenues and expenses. And it makes it very easy for top management to compare the performance of different divisional managers. The disadvantages of using divisional income include the fact that the divisions may be of different sizes. In that case, we have to find a way to make a fair comparison. And it doesn't include whether the managers are using the firm assets that are under their control effectively. So let's look at some profitability ratios, which can be very helpful if we are comparing divisions of different size, because we're going to do this on a per dollar basis rather than on total division profits. One ratio is the gross margin ratio. We know that gross margin is the difference between sales and cost of goods sold. The gross margin ratio is the gross margin divided by sales revenue. So that's going to tell us how many pennies are available out of each sales dollar. And what it shows is the extent to which the manager has controlled cost of goods sold. All of the pennies that aren't included in gross margin must have gone for cost of goods sold. However, gross margin ratio ignores other operating costs for the division. Another ratio that might be useful is the profit margin ratio. In order to use this ratio effectively, we need to decide how we're going to measure profit. Some firms choose operating income. In that case, the profit margin ratio is operating income divided by sales. What it's going to tell us is the extent to which 
the manager has controlled operating expenses. This ratio is also sometimes called the operating margin ratio. Alternatively, if a firm prefers, it could use after-tax income in the numerator. In that case, the ratio would be after-tax income divided by sales revenue. So it would include not only the effect of operating costs, but also tax effects. In either case, these ratios are telling us how many pennies are left in our income measure out of each sales dollar. Let's look at an example. We have a company, Health E, that makes gym equipment. They manufacture free weights in one division and treadmills in another division. If we're not using ratio analysis, we would simply look at how successful each division has been at its goal of generating income. So we notice that the treadmill division has been much better at generating sales and it has also been more successful at generating gross margin, operating income, and after-tax income. But if the divisions are different sizes, this may not be a fair comparison. If the treadmill division is much bigger, of course they're going to generate more sales, more operating income, more after-tax income. So let's look at some ratios to see which division is performing better based on the income generated per dollar of sales. Let's look first at the gross margin. For the free weights division, we would take the gross margin and divide by sales revenue and we get a number, 40%. That tells us that the free weights division kept 40 cents out of each sales dollar as gross margin. The other 60 cents per sales dollar went to cover cost of goods sold. For the treadmill division, we take their gross margin and divide it by their sales revenue. And that shows 28%. In other words, the treadmill division only kept 28 cents out of each sales dollar for gross margin. What that's telling us is that cost of goods sold eats up more sales revenue in the treadmill division than in the free weights division. Thus, the free weights division kept more of each sales dollar than the treadmill division did. And the reason for that is the nature of cost of goods sold for each division. Now let's look at the profit margin ratios. This firm has decided to use operating income in the numerator of the profit margin ratio. For the free weights division, we would take operating income and divide by sales revenue, and that gives us a number, 6%. That means after considering cost of goods sold and operating expenses, the free weights division keeps six cents out of each sales revenue dollar. The other 94 cents went to cover cost of goods sold and operating expenses. For the treadmill division, we would do the same thing. Divide operating income by sales revenue and we would get 3%. In other words, the treadmill division only keeps three cents out of each sales revenue dollar as operating income. What this is telling us is that the free weights division 
keeps more out of each sales dollar in the form of operating income. It uses up less of its sales revenue to cover cost of goods sold and operating expenses compared to the treadmill division. Now, let's look at the profit margin ratio based on after-tax income. For the free weights division, we would divide after-tax income by sales and we get a number, 4.2%. So, after considering all expenses, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and taxes, the free weights division keeps 4.2 cents out of each sales dollar. By contrast, the treadmill division keeps only a little more than two cents out of each sales dollar. What this shows us is considering everything, the free weights division does better at controlling its costs compared to the treadmill division. That's how we can evaluate profitability for profit centers that are of unequal size.